from Boise, Idaho, ready for a college football doubleheader. First stop, Mountain West. Put it on the board. That is a Utah State touchdown. Boise State for the touchdown. The Broncos are division champs. Unbelievable. Aggies are hunting for a bowl game. Touchdown, Utah State. Here we go. It's Black Friday on the Blue Turf. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS. And this is a gorgeous morning in Boise, in the Mountain West, Utah State, and Boise State. The Broncos arrive on the blue at 7-0 in conference. They are in the championship game next week against Fresno State. They want to keep their mojo going. Utah State, bowl eligible, doesn't have a bid yet. They want to get to 7-5. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Taylor. Amanda Guerra joins us shortly. The story of these two teams is a turnaround. No, not from last year, but from the middle of the season. Two of the best midseason turnarounds in the country. Man, boy, have they been ever. Boise State was picked to win this whole deal. Started the season out 2-2, two and two, fired its offensive coordinator, lost a four-year starter at quarterback, and have gone on an absolute run and are hosting the championship game here next week. And for Utah State, they started out 1-4, and four, but they hung in there, and they gone on a five and one stretch they're now bowl eligible trying to improve what bowl they get to these two teams of the resilience they show are everything that's good about our sport here's the formula for boise state you start with dirt cutter the offensive coordinator he's been great with Taylor green who's been spectacular but he got the running game going did cutter george holani approaching a thousand yards that's kept one of the best defenses in the country off the field and very very effective Time for the Home Depot doing Project Smarter. We present all three. Andy Avalos was real smart putting Taylor Green under center because he has been a nightmare for defenses to defend. He's tall, he's strong, he's accurate. He's a deadly runner in the red zone, and he's made all the difference for this offense, Rich. But his addition has allowed for George Halani to put this team on his back. He's a punishing runner that's got great vision. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, and he's going to be key today against a defense defense that struggled stopping the run but you mentioned the Broncos defensively all season long they've been very consistent fourth in total defense they lead the country in pass defense but they struggled against the run they like to turn it over as we saw there so they're going to pose a lot of problems for the Aggies offensively let's not forget that the Aggies are defending Mountain West champions and a fun and creative passing game how'd they turn it around with their running game and Calvin Tyler Jr. Calvin Tyler Jr., his improvement throughout the season has been fun to watch. He's a patient runner, but he can run with some power. Utah State told us that they want to be balanced today, and Tyler is the guy that has to get it done for him on the ground. Blake Anderson, second year at Utah State. Champs last year wants to get to 7-5 and five and secure that bull bid. Andy Avalos in his second year at Boise State. Huge win at Wyoming, and this week he was talking about the offense and the defense from his quarterback. With more on that, here's Amanda Guerra. Rich, we found out back when he was in high school, Boise State quarterback Taylor Green actually received an offer from former TCU head coach Gary Patterson to play defensive, and he turned it down. But those skills are still showing up on the field. Last week against Wyoming, after a rare George Hulani fumble, Green took off after defensive end Devon Harris, sprinting more than 54 yards to catch him, made a tackle worthy of a highlight reel. In fact, it was so good this week, the team pulled it up as an example. Head coach Andy Avalon says they're always preaching about getting guys on the ground to stay in the fight. That's exactly what Green did in that moment. It's also a great example of how this team has done whatever it needs to stay in the fight this season. All right. Thank you, Amanda. They'll try to protect the blue against Utah State and a Mountain West opener, our doubleheader here on CBS. We've got Arkansas and Missouri after this. Caden Dudley, Tyler Crow, deep for Boise State. And this is Dudley straight ahead has a seam and a big return out to the 40 great field position for Boise State 36 yards on the return Papa John's brings you the starting lineup 
Well, what more can we say about Taylor Green? He's been outstanding. He certainly has, Rich, and he has made such a difference. And if you're a Boise State fan, you're looking at the next star quarterback here on the blue. He's a true dual threat, but really worked on his accuracy and passing. The thing that the coaches like about him the most is the decisions that he makes. They have to protect the football today because Utah State's going to come after him. George Halani in the backfield. And Halati, his first carry since that fumble against Wyoming, and he's upended. Hale Potsu Abuaka makes the start for Utah State. Well, we talked. Yeah, we talked about George Halani, but Ashton Genty is the next star. In fact, I think he's got a higher ceiling than George Halani has, and we know how good he's been. But keep your eye on the right tackle today. Garrett Curran, number 69, he's usually the left guard, but he's starting today at the right tackle position, and I can't tell you how difficult of a job Curran's got playing that position. Halani again, and this time he busts out across the 45, out to the 46-yard line, going to bring up a third down and three. A lot of injuries on both defenses today. But, yeah, but they have their best player on defense and their leader, Hunter Reynolds. He's their best DV. He plays Rover. He went off on Ike Larson and some of the other players because of the leadership that he brings to the table. But this is a defense that is absolutely decimated. They're without five starters that they hoped could play today. Third down and three, Holani, and he's got the first down. He's into Utah State territory. Kaleo Nevis made the stop. Holani never fumbles until he did in the late stages of that Wyoming game. But it certainly made for an exciting game for us to watch. And what we're seeing here is what Boise State's going to like to do all game long. Turn around, hand the rock off. Kurt Rothdahl, the tight end, did a nice job of sealing the backside there to pick up the first down. Green is throwing at a 66% completion percentage, and he'll air it out for the first time. Fires it over the middle, and it's incomplete. And that was Davis Cutter, who is the son of the temporary offensive coordinator, Dirk Cutter. Yeah, I had an unfortunate fumble in last week's game against Wyoming, and he's playing today because they're without Stephon Cobbs. And you take a look at Dirk Cutter, the offensive coordinator. He was elevated from the analyst position. I'll be honest, Rich, when you lost your offensive coordinator, your four-year starter at quarterback, you got a brand-new quarterback and a new OC, I thought this thing was going to be a disaster. It's been anything but. Speaking of that right tackle spot, Garrett Curran. All start, number 69, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's Timothy Davis, our referee. And those are crushers out there because it puts you behind the sticks right away. And we mentioned Curran, usually a left guard. Rich, it's like when you go from a Mac to a PC, it all does the same thing, but everything kind of looks different and takes you a lot longer to get used to it. That's what it's like moving from right guard or left guard to right tackle. When in doubt, convert it to a PDF. This is Latrell Cables with the catch right at midfield. And Cables going to get those five yards back, but this will bring up third down at about 10. Cables is their leading receiver this year. And one of the things that's different about this Boise team, Rich, is that they don't have a star receiver. There's no Khalil Shakir on this roster, so it's kind of been receiver by committee, but it's really been effective, and there's some good young players on this team that can help get better and grow as time goes on. So third down and 10, just underway, first touch for Boise State. Bellani is a very good receiver out of the backfield. And Green gonna go down the sideline. That's Bowens, and it's broken up, almost intercepted. A Johnny Carter, who many thought would not play, he's one of the few injured guys that was able to come back on the coverage. Really impressive by here by Johnny Carter because he's even on the field, but he had an interception in this game last year that was huge. He almost gets another one there. He's tracking the football over his shoulder, looking back into the sun, so not surprised that he didn't catch it. But man, that's a sight for welcome eyes for Utah State secondary because Ephraim Banda, again, we mentioned all the starters that are out. It's good that 12's out there. James Ferguson Reynolds, one of two Australian punters in this game. That's an adventurous tour by Cooper Jones on the return to get up and make the catch. Utah State's first possession. Morning time in the Mountain West. Boise State, Utah State. Scoreless start, first possession, Utah State. Papa John starting lineups. Cooper Lega, a terrific talent at quarterback. 
He certainly is, and he's a true dual threat quarterback. Does a nice job of extending plays with his legs, and when his guys can't get open, he can still have the ability to pick up first downs. Decision making for him is going to be critical today. He's got to protect the football. This offense, a spread offense that will run it, very creative. Lega has some weapons on the outside. This is Terrell Vaughn, one of the wide receivers, and he's going to get a seven-yard pickup. And here's the rest of the offense. Brian Cobbs is maybe the most dangerous of those weapons. Yeah, he's got elite ball skills, a big body wide receiver, fourth in the conference in receiving yards. And here he is, Brian Cobbs. That's well choreographed. Right out of the lineups, Cobbs with a catch. One of the things you'll notice about this offense, Rich, is that they go at a breakneck pace. That really puts pressure on the defense because they've got to get set and make calls. Look up here at the top of the screen. There's a wide receiver outside the numbers. Tyler. And Tyler gets to the 38-yard line. Boise State's great against the run, but not last week against Wyoming. Yeah, but Captain Scott Matlock, Big Red, does a beautiful job. I was watching him on the field in pregame. He had this team fired up. A lot of people say that this game doesn't mean much for Boise, but they want to defend the blue, and Matlock had him ready. Second down, seven. Legat pulls it. Oh, and he's hammered, and it's almost intercepted. That's Andrew Simpson. One of the guys getting a lot of time because of injuries. And the ruling is an incomplete pass. This is a great play call by Spencer Danielson. He brings Simpson off the weak side opposite of where running back Calvin Tyler went. Utah State zigged and Boise State zagged and got the hit on the quarterback for the incompletion. The guy is a tough dude, though. State champion is a wrestler in high school. Maybe too tough sometimes. Coaches want him to slide a little bit more than running behind his pads. Third and seven. Let's see if Boise State brings heat and a flag. Start number four. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. No place to hide when you're the running back and you jump. Not at all, and this is back-to-back -back drives where both offenses have had a false start that puts them behind the sticks, making a tough job even harder. It led to Boise putting the football away. Let's see what the Aggies can do to overcome their mistake. Usually a very loud environment here in Boise. Four-man rush, Legault with time, fires over the middle, and it's over the head of Brian Cobbs and incomplete. And both defenses, while banged up, are able to get the other offense off the field. Legault's actually lucky that this ball was thrown high. Had he thrown that a little bit lower, it might have been intercepted. The safety, J.L. Skinner, came over there, and that was a, uh, a really good overthrow to avoid the turnover. All right, the second of our Australian punters, Stephen Kotzenly. And Utah State loves to run fake punts. Kotzenly has thrown for a first down, and he's run for a first down. Caples with the catch. He didn't go down yet, but now he does. Back at the 22-yard line. If it's your first look at Taylor Green, you're in for a treat. When we get back, the Broncos with the football. Scoreless start. Utah State, Boise State. It's a game of honor, and we're proud to bring it every year. Philadelphia, the setting this year, the annual Army-Navy game presented by USAA, Saturday, December 10th, right here on CBS. Taylor Green, redshirt freshman, Louisville, Texas, 6'6", 220 pounds. His last two games have been under miserable conditions, snow and cold in Reno. Wind chilled at about zero at Wyoming last week. There and he Green goes. trying to get to the edge and those long strides. <laughs> nice job running him down by Dominic Tatum. Well, here's how it started for Boise State. First four, and you see the last seven, of course, between 
week four and five, the change. Dirk Cutter, the new offensive coordinator. Taylor Green, the new quarterback. Yeah, it's like the social media meme, right? How it started and how it's going. It's been going great. They've done an excellent job, Cutter has, of simplifying this offense, doing what they do best, and making Taylor Green take baby steps each week has really paid dividends. George Halani to get to the 30-yard line. The running game has really regenerated the passing game. It's helped the defense. Uh, it's helped everybody, and that was Cutter's first initiative when he took over. It was one of the strengths that this program's had, but I'll be honest with you, Rich, this offensive line was not good through the first three or four weeks, and it was neutering George Halani, who's a, a, a huge weapon in this offense. So getting back to the basics has really paid off, and it's also allowed Taylor Green to make almost meteoric rise week to week in the way he's improved and what he can handle. They're down at three. Utah State has used their first time out of the half. Scoreless start, we're back at 30. Scoreless in the Mountain West, Sunday, Sunday, NFL on CBS. Week 12, outstanding matchups. Bengals and Titans, Texans, Dolphins. And we get you ready for all the games with JB and the guys. On the NFL today, noon Eastern, the NFL is on CBS. Out of the timeout. Yeah, you got a Packer fan in go the pack, house. Go Pack Go, don't you know they're hey, Steelers in the house. Oh, Looks boy. like a giant. The Broncos have 15 players in the NFL currently right now. Some pretty darn good ones. Third down three. Ball sits just inside Boise State's 30-yard line. Utah State showed pressure and bailed. This time they come. Green, high throw, incomplete. And neither offense looks like it has any rhythm right now. No, and that's a really good sign for this Utah State team that twice on third down, they've tried to target a Johnny Carter. But because of the errant throw and some late pressure in Green's face, the ball's not even catchable. They were really worried about their ability to stay with these receivers. A Johnny has been hurt, didn't practice all week, got hurt again in practice yesterday, just trying to walk through some things, but seems to look pretty good here. And Boise State with back-to-back -back drives that go nowhere. Utah State has blocked three punts this year, but they weren't close to that one. And it's out of bounds right around the 39-yard line of Utah State. And let's check in with Amanda Guerra. Hi, Amanda. Hey, Rich. Yeah, let's talk about Cooper Legat, Utah State quarterback here. When he arrived at Utah State, offensive coordinator Anthony Tucker asked him, what are your strengths and weaknesses? He said, Coach, I'm a winner. Sure enough, he is. You mentioned some of this. What a state championship in wrestling, football, and track. He actually won six of them. Cole Coach Tucker that he was here to do the same, only he had to wait for a while. Last season, Coach Tucker told him he was going to be third on the depth chart. Well, coaches say, look, he never complained. He showed up every day like he was going to start that week. He went from third to backup and now starting. They say they believe he willed himself to be in this position. And you know what, Amanda, when, when he got his chance, he was ready. His first college throw was in the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl last year. It was a touchdown. He led Utah State back in that game and beat Oregon State coming off the bench. Two over two up top. Tyler right side. Thank you. And that's maybe half a yard. Scott Matlock, who is the heart and soul of this Boise State defense. Anthony Tucker is a uh, terrific offensive coordinator in his second year. Tempo success, he says, it depends on first down. Got to be good on first, got to be a short third down as well. This throw is caught and rolling out of bounds is Brian Cobbs. He's one of the best pass catchers in the West is Cobbs. And what you love about that is the location of that football. Cooper Legoff throws those quick outs very, very well. He allows the receiver to come back to the football to shade the ball from the defender. He did that a couple times in the game a week ago. That's next level quarterback play in terms of location. Cobbs caught 10 balls for 122 yards last week. Third and two, right near midfield. Lega bounces outside, and I don't think he's going to get it. No, he's out of bounds. 
a yard short right at the 48 yard line. Boise State only had five guys in the box, but they defended it extremely well. DJ Schramm busted through the line of scrimmage right away. Legault wanted to hand that ball off to Tyler, but couldn't because of the penetration, and J.L. Skinner does the rest. And Utah State now with back-to-back -back three and outs. Cotson lead a punt. It's Holati. Fair catch, all four and made at the 18. And out west, a scoreless start, Utah State, Boise State. I'm Blake Anderson, head football coach at Utah State, and this Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for family and friends. Hi, I'm Andy Avalos, and on this Thanksgiving, I'm especially thankful for all the people that are in my life, my family, uh, my friends, uh, all the people involved in the Boise State Athletic Department, all the players, all the staff, all the administration, and I'm thankful to be with them today. And both these coaches and their teams had big Thanksgiving celebrations last night. A lot of food was consumed. We had a big celebration last night, too. We did? There was a couple pieces of pumpkin pie, maybe an apple pie that went down last night for your boy. I can honestly say I've never seen anyone eat pie with a knife, but uh, you did that quite well last night. Hey, man, what happens at Thanksgiving dinner is supposed to stay at Thanksgiving dinner, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. That's all I'll say. All right, let's see if uh, one of these offense can get rolling. And Green turns right into a blitz. And down he goes. Byron Vaughn's coming off the edge. Efren Banda told me and Amanda before the game that they wanted to put pressure on the quarterback every single time. What he likes to do is roll out and get outside the pocket. They wanted him to take hits early. They felt that when Green gets hit early, he gets a little rattled. Given how hard he's had a time connecting balls anyway, everything's going to plan for Utah State defensively so far. Ashton Genty is in the ball game, and Genty's first carry. Ooh. The Broncos say he's their second best offensive player behind George Halani. And he may be giving Holani a run for his money. I said this before. I think this young man has NFL potential as a freshman. He's got power. He's got speed. He can change direction really well. He can jump cut, as you kind of see there. But it's the acceleration that allows him to pick up these Third yards. Down. But he runs with power, just like Holani, with better top-end speed. Third down and four. Holani's back in. And he is going to be short of the first down. And that's Daniel Grishik. Very conservative play call here again, but Grishik doing a good job of tracking from behind. Boise State likes to run that stretch zone, but they know what it is they need to do here. They feel confident in their defense and what they're doing. Boise State not wanting to make mistakes, but credit this Utah State defense, Rich. They have been gassed this year on the ground, but they're holding up here pretty good early. And they've been giving up close to 200 yards a game on the ground and almost 400 yards per game overall. That punt's going to wobble out of bounds, and Utah State is going to get good field position. All right, last year at this time, Utah State got themselves in the championship game, and they beat San Diego State. And this year... Logan Bonner, their quarterback from last year, was hurt, banged up. They were 1-4. and four. They got smoked at Alabama. And then all of a sudden, Cooper Legault is at quarterback. Calvin Tyler Jr. is running it, and they've won 5 of 6. And they're bowl eligible, but that doesn't mean they have a bid yet. There are seven bowl eligible teams in this conference. There are six guaranteed spots. So winning this game and going to 7-5 and five would go a long ways to securing one of those bids. 43-yard line. Here comes Vaughn. This was the first play of the day. And Vaughn this time is hit and dropped. Andrew Simpson is enjoying his time in the starting lineup. Zeke Noah is still out. Simpson has made two stops already. And he's one of these young players that's done a nice job of stepping up. DJ Schramm there setting the edge. Got her done, too. 
blitz comes. Tyler bounces off two tackles. And he's close to midfield, about the 49-yard line. Going to be a third down and a long four, maybe five. Look for them to get the ball to number eight. He's their best playmaker on offense. Utah State wants to go fast, but they're taking their time to decide here. Boise State showing speed. The Aggies have not been able to get on the outside edge. Lagaz's legs here are in play as well. Throwing against this Boise State team has not been easy this year. Last week, Jaden Clemens of Wyoming was 3 of 16 for only 30 yards and three picks. Blitz comes, picked up. Lagaz with time, and it's incomplete. Vaughn was out of bounds anyways. And guess who? Andrew Simpson again. Andrew Simpson did an excellent job in coverage out there. He pushes Vaughn out of bounds. He just big bodies him here. Vaughn comes back. You see the official drop his hat. And there was some late pressure that forced the Aaron throw by Lega. And man, he came to a Utah State Boise State game and a, a defensive battle broke out. That's Devin Wright that got some pressure on him. It's a fake. They love to do this. The throw is caught and dropped. And a flag is down. We could have interference. We told you they love to do this. And man, that was creative. Cobbs came rolling around, fired it out to the 40. There was contact and no catch. Cobbs shoots the ball. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Personal foul, targeting, number zero, the turn team. That's 15 yard penalty, first down. The free to flip is up. Man, a lot going on here, but what's most notable is that Brian Cobbs, your leading receiver, a left handed. Now quarterback throws the ball, tries to get it downfield, Rich. We talked about the specials that they like to dial up on special teams. Midfield is a place to do it. But J.L. Skinner drops the crown of his helmet, which now this year is designated as the top six inches. He's trying to get the ball to Otto Tia. But this may be a situation where J.L. Skinner, who's left the season a couple times this year because of targeting, but let's bring Gene in here to help clean this up for us. I think you did a good job with it, Aaron. Not only does he drop the crown, let's remember that that receiver in this position is defined as defenseless as well. So any forcible contact to the head or neck area because he's defenseless would also fall in the targeting category. I believe it's a hit with the crown also. So I think they'll stay with the ruling on the field of targeting for those reasons. Just a reminder, for targeting in college football. There are boxes that, that need to be checked. And as uh, Gene and Aaron talked about, it sounds like they, they checked a few of those boxes already. The NFL scouts really love J.L. Skinner. I mean, he's a tall drink of water, 6'4", 220 pounds, and he's a headhunter. He plays the game violently and physically, which is the way it's intended to play, but we have to get the head out of football because of what we know it does. J.L. Skinner is still working on that part of his game, and those are the things that we have to clean up in our sport, and this would be a big loss for this Boise State defense if this gets confirmed or stands because he was the guy that was a hero last week against Wyoming with two interceptions, five tackles, and a pass breaking up. Gene, from what you've seen in the college game, has targeting been reduced over the last three, four years? Yeah, I think it has, Rich. And, and, and as Aaron said, look, it was only a few years back where these types of hits were, were what we were almost, uh, you know, teaching the players to do in, in an aggressive fashion. Now what we're trying to do, you've got to change the landscape of the technique. And in this case, if this defensive player just lifts his head up and lowers that target area only by some inches, actually, now that same good aggressive play falls safely for him as the initiator of that, which is who they're protecting in a lot of these cases, but still has the same result, right? And that's kind of what happens uh, in this game. You're trying to change that, that mechanic and that technique. It's 
disqualified. So the call is confirmed there, and JL Skinner is going to be allowed to stay on the field to watch his team, but he's no longer going to be able to play, Rich. And because this is in the first half, he'll miss the remainder of this game. But good news for Broncos fans, he'll be able to play in the Mountain West Conference Championship here next Saturday. Of course, Skinner had the great two minutes at the end of the Wyoming game. He had two interceptions to seal that road win. Skinner's not happy, and you understand why he's not happy. He's just out there playing. It's a bang-bang situation, but as the rule is written to keep players safe, he was guilty of targeting and is going to need to sit the rest of this game out. Well, I guess that answers our question of whether or not Boise State cared about this game and had anything to play for, doesn't it? Into Boise State territory. Cooper Lega with Vaughn in motion. And he'll pitch it to Vaughn. Terrell Vaughn. Rodney Robinson knocks him out of bounds. And a flag is down in front of the Boise State bench. Flag on the field. DJ Schramm in pursuit. What an incredible year Schramm has had. Just a warrior. Long conference with the officials. Personal foul, face mask, number 52. Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. DJ Schramm. Leading tackler for this Boise State team. He did a great job of tracking this, but he's coming from behind, and it's actually Oladipo. Say Oladipo, the safety that had the face mask there. And what's ironic here is Utah State is dead last, 131st in penalty yards per game, but it's the early penalties by the Broncos that are having the biggest impact here. This drive. Almost solely on penalties. Lagos scrambling. Very mobile. Looking, keeping, and he dances out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. That's a gain of about three. And a flag is down in the uh, backfield. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 61. Offense. 15 yard first step. Waylon Lapuaho, and you could see him dive on the defender when the defender was down on the turf, trailing Lega. You love the aggressiveness, you love the decision to try to finish, but right here, this is unnecessary, especially because it's from behind. Lapuaho is one of the most penalized players, had a holding call last week, seven penalties totally this year. And that one cost him because now it's first and forever. First and 25. Calvin Tyler Jr. And he's to the 35 yard line. And this is going to be second down and forever. This offense wants to go fast, Rich. And when you don't have much success on first down, it makes it really hard to do that. And it negates one of the greatest advantages of the speed, which is keeping the defense off balance. Luka steps up, fires, incomplete. That one wobbled. And Brock Lane, the tight end, was the intended receiver. There was some late pressure off the right side of this offensive line. The fine Obacheri was the first one there and this is a unit that can get after the quarterback this is third and forever so you're thinking screen or draw or some sort of delay here you're at the very edge of field goal range so you cannot take a sack or lose yardage Connor Coles their kicker has a 50 yarder this would be a 52 yarder from the line of scrimmage Lagos throw almost intercepted Rodney Robinson the free safety and so now we'll see if Connor Coles is going to take a shot at what probably will be a 52 yarder. And I thought there was an opportunity to hit a wide open receiver right there. He's got his tight end that's open, but he elects to throw it to the outside, outside the hash. 
And Robinson gets his hand on it. And to your point, Rich, now they're kicking a 52-yard field goal. Bulls the junior, 10 of 14 this year. The long from 50, and this one's blocked. Special teams always great with Boise State. Andy Avalos. Emotional. That was a heck of a stop after losing one of their better defensive players, Rich. Blocked kicks. It was actually the right guard. Number 73, it hit him on the helmet. That was on the kicker. It was a super low kick. Nobody from Boise got a hand on it. Avalos is rightfully fired up. And this script feels a lot like last year for Blake Anderson. They played a miserable game against Boise State at home in Logan. In that game, they had two field goals that they missed, two red zone picks, 13 penalties, a disastrous fake punt, and they called a fair catch on the one-yard line on a punt return. All of those things just added up, and they really collapsed against a good Bronco team. No question. And Take a look at Boise State's first three possessions. 12 yards, but all ended in the punt, those first three. This is what they want to do, Rich, is just get the offensive line lathered up. There's been some injuries there all season long. They started last week's game with the starting five that they wanted, and that means adding Ben Dooley to that right guard position. But Garrett Kern, the left guard, again, playing at right tackle, which is a completely different world for an offensive lineman, even though it's the same position group. Boise State just one of four on third down. And it looks like the Clydesdale package is in. Three defensive linemen in that offensive line. And there's your quarterback up top. They've thrown to him out of this formation. And Holani in a Wildcat snap looking for a first down. He needs three yards. I don't know if he got it. He was right to the stick. We'll see where the spot is. And he does have the first down. Right at the 45-yard line, Hunter Reynolds made the stop. Braxton Feely, Scott Matlock, part of that Clydesdale package. Great job by Reynolds, but even better effort by Halani. We talked about the punishing runner that he is and that power that he brings. It just showed up there on third down. Remember last year in this game, the Clydesdale package caught a touchdown pass. Scott Matlock caught one in the end zone. He got a little mad at me because I called it a fat guy touchdown. <laughs> he did. <laughs> He didn't like that. Hunter Reynolds makes the hit. Holani on the carry. Second down and about three. And now Boise's using tempo to their advantage. Genty to the 48. So next time you see the Clydesdale package, think about this play. Big Red was money in this. This was the game last year. Hank Bachmeyer, who's no longer here. Tim Plow made that call. Stats picks him up, and it was a beautiful, well-designed play. Completely caught Utah State off guard. So I want to apologize to the entire Matlock family if I offended you for calling you portly. That looked more like a, a scene from Dirty Dancing than Fat Guy Dancing. Man, I hope Stetz's back was okay. <laughs> you can't quit it, can you? That one, a throw to the sideline. Caught there. That's Bowens. Makes a cut. Bowens still on his feet. He's 10. Runs out of gas. Reynolds catches him at the 5. 37 yards for a guy who has really blossomed, Billy Bowens. This is a simple pass, and this had a chance to get stopped, but a missed tackle right there on the outside edge by Andre Grayson, who's playing with a separated shoulder. Misses the tackle, can't get Bowens down. We talked about the injuries in the secondary for the Aggies, and it just had an impact here on Boise State's biggest play of the game. In the red zone for the first time in the ball game. Watch Taylor Green's legs down here. He's deadly. Polani inside the four. Second down and goal from about the three. Final seconds, first quarter. Mountain West, last regular season game. Boise State trying to keep their momentum into the championship game. Utah State trying to secure a bowl bid. And the Avalos and the Broncos. On the doorstep, headed to the seconds.
Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. First of a doubleheader, Arkansas, Missouri, coming up after this one. Nonstop sports news expert picks biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, 24-7 Sports News Network. It's free. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Numbers from the first quarter. And the important numbers here, second and goal from the three. And this is going to be third and goal from about the six as Byron Vaughn's met George Halani behind the line of scrimmage. Byron Vaughn's is a transfer from Texas. He's a thick, tall, drink of water, 6'4", 225 pounds. But we talk about penetration killing the run game. It completely throws the timing off, and Vaughn's won that rep big time. Third and goal, and here's where sometimes Taylor Green's legs come into play. Alani in the backfield. Green looks, fires, corner, caught, McAllister, touchdown. He got his feet in, and Boise State is on the board. Just one on one wins the rep right out of the gate using quickness to get a Johnny Carter to bite inside. Boom, he creates all the separation he needs. And Eric McAllister, the guy that is out of Texas, the emerging downfield threat starting to become more consistent, gets the first touchdown of the game. Good in college, wouldn't have been good in the NFL, but he ain't in the NFL yet. And now, boys, he's up 7 0. Off the missed field goal by Utah State. First touchdown of the day, impressive drive. Taylor Green, Eric McAllister, the junior out of Texas. 7 0 Broncos. Adam Zucker, New York, with this Jeep update. Texas a chance to reach the Big 12 championship game. It starts with beating Baylor. They were down 9 0, then Quinn Ewers took one in, and now Bijan Robinson goes in to make it 14 9. Baylor just made a field goal. 14 12, second quarter. Rich and Aaron, gobble, gobble. Adam, thank you. 7 0. Boise State on top of Utah State. Aaron Taylor, go to work. Yeah, we'll keep your eye right here. Here's Eric McAllister right down here. But look at the bunch set into the boundary. That means that this is a one-on-one -on -one situation. And with McAllister giving himself some room there, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's got the entire right third of the field to work with. And Taylor Green, who had struggled with his accuracy, puts the ball on the money for the first touchdown of the game. Well designed, well executed. Some of those wrinkles that Dirk Cutter is starting to figure out they're doing that in the run game as well putting a lot of bodies into the boundary and creating some space artificially by formations into the end zone and time to summon the duck hello duck here we go our aflac trivia question since 2000 boise state on the blue 129 and 14 there's only one other team that's had a better win percentage in college football since then. Can you name that team? I want to give myself credit for picking the correct pool of three. I didn't initially get it, but if you think long and hard about who's had some incredible runs, it starts to make a little sense. And maybe not recent success in the last couple of years. Stop it with the hints now. Come on. There's another formation in the boundary, this time by Utah State. Three over two at the top, but a lot of field up there. Tyler, and that's Schramm. And DJ makes the stop. DJ Schramm just comes in and reads this right away. He's direct in traffic. He sees it. See ball, hit ball. Nobody picks him up. That's a missed assignment up front for Utah State. And that's why he's the leading tackler on this team. Utah State with just 29 total oh. yards. And Lagar had a huge hole and tripped as he got through the line. Chandler Dolphin, his center, he may have been tied up on him. Yeah, Spencer Danielson, the defensive coordinator, was bringing pressure. Andrew Simpson came, and he trips. Had he not tripped, he would have picked up the first down and more. And instead, it's third and forever here. 
Utah State has yet to convert a third down. Boise's third down packages have been money so far. One of the best pass defenses in the country. Lagaz in trouble, trips, and is down and is smothered. Matlock on top of him. Utah State without Xavier Williams. Kyle Van Leeuwen, go ahead and roll it, guys. There's just simply no place for him to throw. Boise shows blitz, but they bail. Only bring four. But he's bracketed here. He's covered. He's covered. There's nowhere for Lega to go. And again, footing problematic. This guy's a pretty athletic quarterback, usually good on his feet. Not been the case here in the first half. Constantly with a good punt. Fair catch called for and made by Lamont Caples. Protect the blue. Boise State doing that so far. 7-0 lead. No shortage of blue here. 7-0. Boise State on top. CBS Sunday. Don't miss the fall finale of the new hit show, East New York, starring Amanda Warren, Jimmy Smith, and Richard Kind. Catch a new East New York Sunday after the equalizer on CBS. Rich Waltz, Aaron Taylor, Amanda Guerra, Gene Steratore. Starting a college football doubleheader, Arkansas-Missouri follows. Big weekend, got the Iron Bowl tomorrow. Taylor Green this morning. To the sideline, caught there, and Genty out of bounds. Both these running backs can really catch it coming out of the backfield. Well, Taylor Green's kind of had a mixed bag early on. His location on the football, a little bit too much air underneath this, allows the beat DB to to recover, but now he's starting to settle himself down and putting the ball on the money. Finds Erickson or McAllister in the back of the end zone, perfectly thrown, perfectly timed, and Taylor Green getting back to the quarterback we've seen for the latter part of this season. Trying to get to the left side and get to the edge, but Byron Vaughn made a lot of big stops. His fourth tackle already. And it's a really nice job because Utah State has held Boise State to less than three yards per carry. There's Bonds out there on the outside edge. He's just the force defender. He's got his eyes on the quarterback the whole time. He takes the first step wide, which causes Green to hesitate. And that was enough to get him down for the tackle for loss. Not too many people have done that to Tim this year. Loss of three. Genty, explosive speed. Vaughn's again, and that's a huge tackle because Genty with his speed, that's at least a five to ten yard pickup. And there was nobody else out there. Genty was outside. Caples was stock blocking the safety right there on the right side of your screen. If Vaughn's doesn't get him down, Ashton Genty, who's got home run hitting speed, might have done just that. Third down and 12. Four of seven is green, 67 yards. And that touchdown to McAllister. Uh -oh. Steps up, fires deep. Capel's there. Caught it. Capel's touchdown. 49 yards. This play was used with formation in motion. As soon as Capels got inside, there was nobody there left to be able to bring him down. That's J.D. Drew in coverage. And because of the injuries to the secondary, Boise found a hole in the defense and took advantage. And a throw that when he took over, Dirk Cutter wouldn't call that play. Taylor Green couldn't make that throw. But the progress they've made has been amazing. Caples with the catch. Broncos, a two touchdown lead. And welcome back to Boise, where Dirk Cutter and the Boise State Broncos are using great formations. You're going to see Caples go in motion, and they're going to switch this. That's J.D. Drew right there. That's the backup defensive back is going to be late getting over and because of the new players in the backfield for Utah State there's some miscommunication and both touchdowns for Boise State have been a result from breakdowns in the Utah State secondary. Terrell Vaughn brings it out and to the sideline and tackled and a flag comes out. That is certainly a late tackle. That was a good 10 yards out of bounds.
right there. Now, yep. it wasn't malicious, but he still probably should have released him. It's Jalen Clark and just unnecessary. These two teams don't like each other very much. <laughs> no. And, you know, that, that one of the interesting things about this series is how lopsided it's been. I mean, in the last 19 games, Utah State has won just once. Yeah, it's not much of a rivalry if after the play was over. A sportsmanlike conduct, number 41, return team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. It'll be first down, Utah State. That is number 41's first UNS toward disqualification. All right, let's bring back the duck. Boise State so great at home. Look at that record, 129 and 14. One team better since 2000. Oklahoma. Amanda Garris, Oklahoma Sooners. First carry for Jordan Wilmore of Utah State. Amanda, your Sooners, not lately, but we've had a, a great run since 2000. Uh, yeah, it's been great, not lately, though. But, you know, before that, it's been nice, and those home games are awfully fun. But I have faith, you know, Brent Venables is going to turn that around. All right. It's been awesome. Amanda's actually going to be an Irish fan this week. For some reason, she's not happy with the USC Trojans. Wilmore again, DJ Schramm. DJ with the stop. 14-0 start for Boise State. If you're just happening by, we're in the Mountain West. Last regular season contest for these two teams. J.L. Skinner, the terrific Broncos, headed for the NFL. A targeting. He's been disqualified. The Broncos have put up 14 points. And Utah State's offense, which is usually really good, is 0-5 on third down and struggling mightily. Blitz comes, Lega with time, fires out, and it's off the hands of Nana Davis. Now 0 for 6 on third down, and the Aggies' offense isn't making things easy on themselves. This ball's a little high. Nana Davis gets his hands on it, but Lega's passes seem to be floating on him a little bit, and that's what took place in the game against San Jose State. He had a couple interceptions on poorly thrown balls, and that's shown up here a little bit early in the first two quarters. Remember, we've already seen one fake punt from Utah State. Cotson Lee going to boot this one away. He gets a really good kick. Fair catch called for and made 14-yard line. Broncos get it again. They're rolling offensively and up by two touchdowns. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. BJ, Kevin Carter, and I get you caught up on today's action, including a battle to host the American Championship game, and Tajay Spears puts Tulane on top 10-3, to a battle of the two best defenses in the conference. Right now it's the Green Wave on top. Back to Boise. All right, Adam, thank you. 14-0 Boise State on top. Speaking of group of five, Aaron Taylor's top group of five teams. Yeah, Tulane has had a heck of a year underneath Willie Fritz. They look to be the cream of the crop. They just got beat by UCF. Gus Malzahn doing a nice job there, but the winner of the Tulane Cincy game is going to go on to the American Conference Championship. Some good football being played. Taylor Green fires it out. Matt Lauder makes the catch. Nicely played by A.J. Vaughn-Pachong, the Utah State linebacker. First five possessions, you can see the last two, 65 and 63-yard touchdown drives. Both of those drives included big, explosive plays. Boise State using the run to set up the pass and exploiting an Aggie secondary that is extremely depleted. As far as a New Year's six for the group of five, the Broncos' hopes probably died with the loss to BYU on this field. That would have been a nice feather in their cap, but remember. A lot of contact. A lot of contact there. And no flags. Billy Bowens, Andre Grayson was playing with a sore shoulder. Yeah. Now remember, both of these players have the right equal rights to the ball. He's within five yards of the line of scrimmage and i like it if you're going to let those guys play and hand fight and do that just call it consistent but i like the no call there 
They converted their last four on third down. Now Green is scrambling. Reynolds is chasing. And Green flips it out of bounds. And incomplete, and Utah State's defense rises up. Really nice job in coverage on the back end. There's nowhere for Talon Green to be able to throw the football. We saw the miscommunication on the big touchdown play, but Utah State has defenders all on that third of the field. Somebody unhinges from the secondary, and Green smartly throws it away. James Ferguson Reynolds from his end zone. Utah State could get a short field out of this. Cooper Jones right at midfield. On Tuesday, it's a night of holiday adventure. Everybody's favorite, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Bumbles bounce, by the way. And a new holiday classic, Reindeer in Here. Tuesday starting 8, 7 central on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. Iconic classic, man. I remember that as a kid. Watching that on the black and white TV with pliers <laughs> on the channel changer. Yes. Not been a good day offensively for the Aggies. The one opportunity they had, they missed on the punt. Feels like this is a must-have situation for points for them. Lagarde, Vaughn makes the catch. Boise State is so good against the pass. They're the best in the country, allowing just 145 yards a game. And last week, they held Wyoming to just 30 yards. Lega, the play blows up, and Lega fires it over the middle, and it's incomplete. Yeah, something looked off on that play. I thought he had Vaughn open backside, but because of Scott Matlock and the immediate pressure, he has to try to evade that and just get rid of the football to avoid the sack. Matlock and Ahmed Hassanin with the pressure, and just like that, it's third down and eight. His defenses are trading three and outs. Five receivers. Four-man rush, inside screen, Brock Lane with the catch, and that's not going to get it done. Maybe a yard. Fourth down and seven. Say Oladipo does a great job of playing this. They're trying to get the ball to Lane. Good block initially, but Oladipo's unblocked and gets there first. There's an opportunity to either run a fake punt or to pooch punt it and try to back Boise State up. The Aggies get the ball back to start the second half, but man, that's their fifth three and out of the game. Constantly the Aussie, very good at this. It'll end over end, right at the 14 yard line. So we told you, seven teams are eligible out of the Mountain West for a bowl game. There's six spots that are guaranteed. Jerry Palm, who is our NCAA basketball tournament and bowl game guru, projects Utah State right here in Boise against Bowling Green and Boise State in the Jimmy Kimmel Los Angeles Bowl. Of course, Boise State's going to play Fresno State right here next week in the Mountain West Championship. I like the fact that Wyoming gets to go to the Boca Raton Bowl. At least that's the projection, <laughs> right? There's maybe nobody more deserving than warm weather than Wyoming. We were there last weekend, and boy, oh boy, was it chilly. Yeah, wind chill was down about zero. This is Taylor Green. And we go down to Amanda Guerra. Well, Rich, this week we asked coaches how Utah State was able to make such a turnaround this year. They said they credit the players, but one in particular, okay, safety okay, Hunter okay, Reynolds. Okay. A couple months ago, he asked coaches if he could call a players-only meeting. And instead of finger-pointing, it turned into each guy in the room stepping up and saying, I can do better. Well, just a couple minutes ago, Reynolds got up on a bench, yelled, defense, come here. He said, we're down 14. Put it all on the line right now, especially when it comes to those first downs. You need to start playing with your heart. All right, thank you, Amanda. Three and out on their last sequence for that defense. And a nice play on first down, second and ten. Green to throw, squeezed in the pocket, throws there. That's Lauder with the catch, the big tight end. He's across the 40 and spilled down about the 42, 
97 yards. And more miscommunication on that defensive backfield. Bonds completely beats Curran and gets a hit on the quarterback. But you saw Nevis right there look to the left. They're trying to figure out what's going on. They're leaving guys wide open. And these are the problems that you have, Rich, when you have new bodies back there. The communication is completely breaking down. Got to go up top again. Going deep. And a struggle there. Billy Bowens, the intended receiver. Flag is down. Xavier Steele. On the coverage. Thought it was initially good that Xavion Steele was in position, but right here you got to let go. He pulls him kind of back and never That's takes his hand off him. Number seven, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. What happens if the receiver has the hand on the defender and the defender has a hand? On the receiver. Well, well it, it's equal rights to the ball, but clearly there, Xavier Steele was trying to impede the progress versus trying to catch the football. It was a good no call early, and you saw the flag came out late. They were giving him a chance, but he didn't take his hands off, and this is back to back weeks with a PI for seven. Green going right back up top and deep. McAllister. And it's incomplete. Hunter Reynolds is everywhere. He's on the coverage with Dominic Tatum. Yeah, and Dirk Cutter, the offensive coordinator, smells blood. He's taking deep shot after deep shot, sudden change, big plays, explosives. But this time, Hunter Reynolds from that safety position is the only healthy DB they have back there. Amanda just did that great story on him. He said, you got to start playing with heart. Well, Reynolds always does that, but there he played with great eyes, field position, and recognition to get underneath that pass. Pilotti. Powers ahead inside the 40. Max Alford makes the hit. George Pilotti carries. To the 37. It's going to be third down and about four. Remember, Dirk Cutter was a head coach here at Boise State, a head coach in the NFL, longtime NFL offensive coordinator. He was a, an analyst who played golf during the day and then watched game tape and kind of advised them when they made that change and asked him to jump in. And he said, sure. Only for this season, though, he said. They'll see some confusion in the defense for the Aggies trying to get lined up right. Polani trying to squirt through, and he does. Polani keeps his feet inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line. This is what Halani's so good at. It's blocked up, but boom, you see he runs through the arm tackle. He is not about your arm tackle. He's not interested in being brought down, but a really nice job with the stock block out on the outside line of scrimmage by Shane Whiting. Check T. He's just going to lose three yards. Motu Apuwaka hauling him down. Rich, this has really been what the Aggies defense has been all season long. They've been on a five and one run. You look at them statistically, it's nasty, man. What they're able to do and how many yards they're giving up, but what they've done an excellent job of. And Ephraim Banda, the defensive coordinator there, calls an aggressive game. They get themselves in situations where after turnovers, they don't give up much points. Three last week, only three points off those three turnovers. That was the difference. Man open, caught McAllister. Touchdown, his second. Just miscommunication again. Guys are running free. You just see nothing going right on that back end. Andre Grayson looking around saying, guys, we got to get this figured out. It was either miscommunication or he was just that late over. He's an experienced player. But that secondary for the Aggies is getting exploited. Extra point up and good. Talon Green has got it going on right now. Well, we told you at the start of the show, Talon Green, one of the bright future stars for Boise State. He's found something he's liked, and the Buckos are bronking up three scores here in the first half. 21-0 Boise State on top. Coming up, Adam, BJ, Kevin will have the first half analysis. And, of course, highlights. This is a busy Friday college football. Our Geico halftime report is coming up. Plenty of blue in Boise. 
And that big blue right there with a little orange mixed in. Looked like one of Brian Jones's sport coats there. Now Utah State has had some really nice comeback wins, but they got to clean this up right now. Well, this is an offense that has been explosive, but they're just getting so many hits on the quarterback that Cooper Legault is having trouble finding open receivers. Only 13 pass yards so far, and finally when they have a chance, the ball's a little high, and Davis can't bring it down, but this offense, three and outs on four of their last five possessions. They are going nowhere quickly. In these sort of situations, sometimes offensively, you want to think about just maybe putting on first down. It's tongue in cheek here, but they got to get something figured out. Legat rolling. Nobody open, and that one fired out of bounds. Just great coverage. This is a defense that's playing with, with a lot of guys out, especially on that defensive line. Dimitri Washington, George Tarlis, Herbert Gums is out right now. Ezekiel Noah, uh, outstanding middle linebacker, is out. Banya transferred who had six sacks last year to your point but the silver lining here if you're a Boise State fan there's a lot of really good young talented players that are getting a lot of role here late in the season boy no kidding Andrew Simpson looks great Gabe Hunter's had a, a nice run edge rusher Vaughn close to the first down Utah State needs to convert a third down here and you're maybe thinking it's four down territory given what it is you have going on and how far you are behind you wouldn't want to turn the ball over in this point of the field with an offense who you haven't been able to stop but being 0 for 7 on third down maybe you take two chances here you'd like to pick this up with Tyler here though on third down and get a fresh set of them it is Tyler and he's hit by the initial blue wave Simpson there first fourth down and one so this is going to test your hypothesis right now do you go for it at this point down 21 nothing it's been really hard for your guys to block up front for Tyler there was immediate penetration on that but we talked about it when you're down three scores you do get the ball back to start the second half it seems like this is a pretty important conversion here if you're rooting for the team in white Tyler in the backfield Lega will keep it and Lega into Boise State territory. That's a big play. That's one of the, the best plays so far for Utah State. Man, this was really good. It completely got me. I thought that they handed the ball off to Vaughn and so did Boise State's defense. But there's the legs and the wrestler and Connor Lega to be able to put or Cooper Lega to be able to push that forward. That was a huge pickup in the first conversion on third or fourth down for the Aggies all afternoon. If his legs can be used as a weapon, that changes the dynamics of their offense. And a good adjustment there by Anthony Tucker. They had ran that same fly sweep play to no avail. The counter to that is what we just saw, and it worked beautifully. 46-yard line, Boise State. Legat play action. Fires over the middle. Caught there. That's Brian Cobbs with the catch. And Cobbs down to the 25-yard line. Ryan Cobbs playing against soft covers there by Caleb Biggers. This is really how the game went last year. I was surprised how early Boise State played such soft coverage, and it became pitch and catch underneath, and Aggies do that there. Tyler again, and that Shram who wraps him up. A loss of down one, Tyler. second down and one. Your point's a good one. Utah State gets the football to start the second half. Tyler Schramm showing you that the shortest distance between two points is a head start. Great instinct. The guys throw, and it's incomplete. Justin McGriff, the intended receiver, and a flag is down. Illegal substitution. Defense, 12 men on the field at the snap. Five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, some big bodies stretched a little late before the snap. <laughs> that, that guy right there, Boyles Award nominee, Spencer Danielson has had an outstanding year as defensive coordinator. Second down, six. The guy, quarterback 
draw. Has room. Has the first down to the 10. And Lagarde spins down to the 9. Rodney Robinson made the stop. And Utah State getting closer here. Great play call this time by Anthony Tucker, the coordinator, because Boise State only rushed three. They were playing coverage there. And the Aggies gassed them up inside. Now, the red zone production was a big factor in their win against San Jose State. They were four for five with four touchdowns. The Aggies desperately need a touchdown here, and that last play gave them a shot. Broncos are great in touchdown prevention in the red zone. Tyler to the three. Tyler Rich, this is kind of what we just talked about, the red zone defense this season in the Mountain West. Nobody better than Boise State at keeping people out of the end zone. Something to keep an eye on. Also, at the end of this drive, it's been beautiful execution by the Aggies because they're bleeding the clock, really limiting Boise's opportunity to get this ball back despite their three timeouts. Andy Avalos running down the sideline to get a timeout. 46 seconds left, first half. Utah State second and goal from the three. Three touchdown lead, final minute, second quarter. CBS Sports embraces authentic stories. Share yours at hashtag my native story. Aaron Taylor, where does Anthony Tucker go on second and goal from the three? I've always believed that the red zone isn't about plays, it's about players. So you've got Brian Cobbs down here to the left and Calvin Tyler Jr. in the background. I'd imagine that the ball's going to one of those two places. Lagarde's been really good himself on the ground in this drive. Utah State does have a couple timeouts. That's Tyler flexed out, Lagarde's by himself, and a flag comes down. False start, number 74, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. That's the center, Chandler Dolphin. Oftentimes, the center's got his hand on the ball and he's pointing, but if he moves the ball while he communicates, it's going to be a false start. And the penalties now starting to show back up for Utah State. Again, the worst in the country, 131st. You just can't afford that down here in the low red zone. They had 13 penalties last year in their loss to Boise State. Certainly it changes the play call here. Second and goal from the eight. Legat looking, pumping, still alive. Flips it, incomplete. Vaughn, the intended receiver. Divine Obacheri putting pressure on Legat. Great decision by Laga here to throw this football away. Three defenders in his face, and that's really been the story of the entire game. Cobbs is bracketed there. He's not open, then it becomes a scramble drill. But Griff can't get himself open either, and five throws it away smartly. Third down and goal. And maybe four down territory here again. You'd like to end the half with some points. You do get the ball back to start the second half, so maybe they take the field goal. Now they're going to talk about it. They know how important this series is here for this second half. These last four minutes and the first four minutes of the second half, Rich, often swing or determine what happens in a ball game from a momentum standpoint. 21 nothing feels like, looks like a big hole, but a touchdown here in the first possession of the second half, and there's your avenue to climb out of that hole. And that's why I think you have to consider whether you do it or not. If you're Anthony Tucker, you have to consider, especially what happens on this next play, whether or not you do have four chances to punch this into the end zone. Because you're right, 21 feels like it's 42 with the way Utah State's been moving the ball today. So do you draw up a play that gets you in the end zone, or do you draw up a play that is at least going to get you four or five yards? Well, this next play call will be telling because if there's not something that's in the end zone, he may be thinking or been told by Blake Anderson that he's got two shots here. McGriff is super tall. He could take a shot downfield and hopefully get a touchdown or a pass interference call. Morning crowd comes to life in Boise. 
And now Andy, Andy Avalos is loose by now because he's had to sprint down the sideline a couple times, and he calls the timeout. The cat and mouse continues. Former linebacker, star linebacker here at Boise State. He's still got it. Avalos, I mean, look, he was recruited by Dirk Cutter, and now Cutter's his offensive coordinator. He played for Dan Hawkins, played for Chris Peterson, coached with both of those guys as well. So there's been a, a long line of uh, coaching threads that are connected in this program, starting with Cutter. That's when Boise State really started to, to get rolling. Dan Hawkins took him higher. Chris Peterson took him even higher. Don't forget about the role that Houston Dale Nutt played earlier. That's right. All right, finally. From the eight, third and goal. The guy, quarterback draw. And there's the four to five yards. And now it's going to be fourth and goal, but much closer, obviously, after a five-yard pickup. I like this play call. It's a designed quarterback draw. Again, Boise State plays coverage there, only rushes three. And as we suspected, this offense is considering going for it instead of taking the three points with the field goal. Or maybe they're just running this clock down. We're going to take the three points and end on a positive note. Either way, you understand the decision, but getting points and ending on a positive note probably is the right decision here. Well, or it's a timeout. You don't want to leave any any <laughs> time on, and they're going to try to stick in the end zone. This is an interesting sequence here. They've had lots of time to discuss lots of things between <laughs> these last five minutes of actual clock time and last minute on the game clock. All right, you know, oftentimes it, in, at the start of the sequence, Eddie almost called a timeout because he saw the set. He suspected they weren't in the right spot. You wonder if, like, Utah State, because it's been, like, four timeouts since, would go back to that original play <laughs> that they had on the three-yard line. All right, looks like the offense is staying out there. I, I like this, right? If you're Utah State, you're already bowl eligible. You're trying to improve your bowl positioning. You don't have anything to lose here. You get the ball back to start the second half. You're down three touchdowns anyway, so if you get stopped, it's kind of hand. I like it. Tyler's in the backfield. Fourth and goal. <laughs> and Avalos takes another timeout. It's a flag down as well. Timeout, Boise State. 30 seconds. Apparently that was before the flag. Well, it just gives Adam Zucker another, you know, minute or two <laughs> to prep on all the highlights coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. All right. Going back, the, the loss at Oregon State, nothing worked in that game. Oregon State's pretty good, but Boise State was awful there. They hit rock bottom at UTEP. They were 2-2. Two and two. Andy Avalos changed offensive coordinators. Hank Bachmeyer transferred out, and Taylor Green took over the run game. The first two games was the emphasis, and everything clicked. And they're 7-0 and in the Mountain West. They've won the Mountain Division. They'll play Fresno State in the championship next week. Avalos deserves a lot of credit for making a tough choice. That was really the first big decision of his head coaching career. And it has worked out beautifully. Notable here, everyone's out of timeouts. <laughs> I think we're all thankful for that. Yes. What you got, Aggies? Fourth and goal. Vaughn in motion, and it's Vaughn trying to get outside, cuts, and he's in! After all of that, Utah State has a touchdown. <laughs> this play, Lagak could have kept it, he was open, but he freezes Shram, and then Brock Lane with that incredible block, hands inside is really the difference on the outside edge that allows this to come. He stays square, hands inside, and Vaughn runs with power to punch it in. And now it's a much different conversation at halftime if you're Utah State. Yeah, they have that first possession and the last possession here. The first half is an impressive 
touchdown drive. 21-7 at the half. For Amanda's halftime interview with Coach Andy Avalos, go to Twitter at CBS Sports. On to Adam Zucker, who's had plenty of time to prep for this in our New York studio, our Geico Halftime Report. Take it away, Adam. Yes, Rich, thank you for the extra prep time. We got to watch Boise try to keep this thing a shutout, but Utah State uh, does get on the board. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, we'll get you caught up on conference races as the regular season winds down. And look ahead to Arkansas, Missouri after this word from your local station.